It's summertime and the halls of FRC are tranquil. The classrooms are empty. And so you might ask, why am I here? I'm here to record the ambiguous case because my file was corrupted. Isn't this exciting? Okay, so lesson 2.3b is the ambiguous case of sign law. And here we go. When solving a triangle, let's say you're given the measure of two sides and an angle which is adjacent to one of those sides. This is a side-side angle problem. Okay, SSA is what we often call it. And there are, in fact, four distinct possibilities when you're given two sides and an angle. The first is that no triangles exist. That, in fact, the sides and the angles that you've been given just are impossible. No triangle could ever be created with all of those. The second possibility is that one triangle exists, and in fact, there is a particular kind of triangle. It's called a right triangle. There's another possibility is that one triangle exists that has the given measures, and this is an obtuse triangle. And the final possibility is that there are two different triangles that are completely different from each other, but that carry the same values for those two sides in that angle. Uh, and so there are um, two solutions to this kind of problem. Uh-oh. So there's going to be two different triangles. So when there are two solutions, we call this the ambiguous case. because we won't know which triangle is the correct one. We'll see some illustrations in a moment to explain all this for us. Okay, I've defined the ambiguous case here. The ambiguous case occurs in a side-side angle tr problem uh, where the given acute angle is opposite one of the two given sides and where that opposite side is both longer than the adjacent side but long enough to form a triangle. Let's take a look some drawings, and I think the drawings will actually make more sense than anything else. Given a side-side angle problem, there are four possible scenarios like Goldilocks and the three bears, now with four bears, okay? So we have an a, a triangle ABC, and in all cases we're going to take a look at triangle ABC, and we're just going to play with side A. Okay, the first case here is the no solution case. That's when the opposite is just a little too short to actually make a triangle. So let's draw this situation here. We have an angle A right here, 30 degrees. Side B has got to be one of the sides next to it. So we'll say this side up here in red is side B, and so that's a length of 6. And side A, to, so this, this, if this is B, then this is... C up here, and B is somewhere down below. And I just have to connect this triangle, and I'm done, right? Well, if you try to connect this, a length of 2 for A, for side A, is too short. It just, that opposite side, that side A, if you ever tried to connect this, it would never connect all the way down to that black line on the bottom. You see, if this were, in, say, in centimeters, if you tried to draw something with six centimeters, and then with a 30-degree angle, and you tried to connect this two-centimeter line, well, it's just too short. It doesn't actually arrive at the other side. It doesn't connect. It doesn't create a triangle. So there is no solution in this case. So this is the case of no solution. No triangle exists with these measures. Okay. Uh, second case here, one right triangle case. This is the opposite is just right. So we have the same measurements for side B and angle A, by the way. So we'll draw the same angle A, 30 degrees. Side B is over here, a length of 6. So that would mean that this is angle C up here, and angle B is somewhere down here. And now I connect in blue 
with my length of 3. Well, let me illustrate that this line here in blue is going to be 3. And how exactly does it connect? Well, in fact, it will connect as a right triangle. We can see this by just doing a quick bit of, of math. Let's say we didn't know this 3. Let's say we just had an H there. Okay? We know that the sine of angle A, that's the 30 degrees, is the opposite. Oh, that's H divided by the adjacent, which or divided by the hypotenuse, which is 6. So 6 times the sine of 30 is going to be H. Plug that into your calculator, by the way. Or recall the exact value for sine as being 1 half when the angle is 30 degrees. And you find that H is 6 times a half, which is 3. Hey, wait a minute, 3. In other words, this height here that just connects right is exactly a length of 3. So in this case, the opposite is just long enough to reach straight down and just arrive at point B. So in our first case, it was 2. It was too short. In our second case, it's a length of 3. It's just enough to make it. Let's look at a third case. This one's going to be the ambiguous case, by the way. The opposite could go in two different directions in this case. And so let's see, we have the same B, the same A, and this time our side A is going to be a little longer. So we draw our angle A again. That's 30 degrees. Let's designate this one as side B, a length of 6. That makes this corner C, and it means B is down here somewhere. I don't know where exactly, so we're going to connect. Now let's remember something here. This height that just barely makes it was a height of 3. That's what we have just above. So if I had a length of 4, if I put a, a, a side that was a length 4 straight down, it would be too long. So to get a length of 4, I have to go backwards or forwards 4. So B could be over here. B could be over there. We don't know. This is why we call it ambiguous. Ambiguous means you don't know. It's one of two possibilities. You don't know which, so there's two possible solutions, two possible scenarios. So just to illustrate that roughly, one of the possible triangles is that it looks like this, A, C, B, and angle B is obtuse. The second possibility is A, C, B. But this time, angle B is acute. Okay, so there's two possible angle Bs. There's two possible angle Cs. There's two possible side Cs. There's two possible triangles. No, and we don't know which is the correct version. Okay, and the last case here. There's one of two solution because the opposite is just too long. Okay, again, we have the same B equals 6 and A equals 30, so we'll start with that. Here's our A, 30 degrees. Our side B is over here. Again, it's a length of 6 for B. That makes C up here, and B is floating down here somewhere. We don't know exactly yet. Now let's recall, the height needed just to reach was 3. So this a equals 10, oh, that's long enough to reach, right? But if I try to draw A in here, that doesn't work. Because that length of, of line that I just drew is shorter than 6. That's less than 6. But that's not possible. A needs to be 10. 
So this is bad, what I've just drawn here. This, this, this doesn't work. So I'll just kind of get rid of it. I can't draw backwards. Well, the only other place that I can draw a length of 10 is out here. And we'll connect our side. We'll actually move B to there. So the label works a little better. And there we go. So when we have a length of 10 longer than the adjacent side 6, it means that the 10 must head outwards to the right in order to form this triangle. In this case, there's only one solution. There it is in front of us. Okay. So, in conclusion here, from all these possibilities, there is one case that's ambiguous. Right here. That's when the side A opposite angle A is long enough to reach all the way down, so longer than the height, but not longer than the adjacent side 6, just right to kind of fit between these two scenarios, which gives us two possible triangles. Let's do one example together. We have a, a, a triangle ABC. We're given A and we're given B, and we want to solve the triangle. Okay, that seems simple enough. We'll just draw it. Angle A is here at 36 degrees. Side B, we'll draw up here. It's going to be a length of 18. Side A is 12. Now, is 12 even long enough to reach all the way? Create one example that we can't even do? Well, how are we going to find out how long we need to be to make it all the way down? That's our height h. We can solve this through just a simple Sokotoa problem. The sine of 36 is going to be the opposite h divided by the hypotenuse 18. And so the minimum height required is 18 times the sine of 36. Okay, I'll take out my calculator now and do some typing. There it is, you can hear it. Sine 36 times 18 gives me a height of 10.58. So 12 easily outdoes it, does that. So good, we reach all the way down. Getting rid of the height now. I see there's two possibilities. Either the 12 goes down here and reaches side B over here, or angle B over there, or comes out here. Two possible triangles. Okay. Well, let's separately draw each of these two triangles below and see where it leads us. So the first possibility is here. A, B, C, 36. Mr. Budik, could you contact the office, please, Mr. Budik? Oh, look, other people are in the building. Isn't that exciting? And there we go. That's our first triangle possibility. Our second possibility is roughly like this. A, C, B, 36 degrees, 18 and 12. Okay, and then the second possibility, B, is much smaller, right? So it all hinges on this. There's a possible B over here or B over here. One is a small B and one is a big B. And let's qualify that. The first B on the left is bigger than 90 degrees, and the second B on the right is smaller than 90 degrees. How do we find angle B? Well, we use the same sine law that we've used before. So our sine law tells us that sine B over side B equals sine A over side A. That is to say that sine B over 18 equals sine A, sine 36, over 12. And so sine of B is equal to 18 times sine of 36 over 12. Okay? 
and you see how important it is that we know our work from the last section in order to get this part right. Okay, so let's type this in. 18 times sine 36 divided by 12 gives me 0.88, etc. And so then angle B is equal to the sine inverse of that 0.88, so of 18 times sine 36 over 12. And that gives me da, 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 61.8. We'll round to one decimal place for now. 61.8 degrees. Which B have I found? The one on the left or the one on the right? In fact, I found the one on the right. 61.8 degrees. How big is the B on the, in, on the left then? How could I find that? For this, you're going to have to recall some of the stuff that we've done previously in trig. And this is going to be a challenge for you to remember why this is true. And you're going to have to come to class with an explanation for me. But the other B is 180 minus 61.8 degrees. If you can come up with an explanation of why that is true, I'll talk to you. And if you can't come up with an explanation of why that's true, I'll still talk to you anyway. So really, either way, we'll talk. Okay, so we get 118.2 degrees. From here, finding angle C in both cases, it's just a matter of taking 180 minus the other two angles. So I'll do that on the left side, 180 minus 36 minus 118.2. That gives me 25.8 for angle C. Whitney Jones, please call three. And on the other side, 180 minus 36 minus 61.8 is 82.2 degrees. So those are the two possible angle C's. And I'll leave it to you. In either case, please find side C and bring that to class. Thanks very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed the ambiguous case.